All right, Math 5130, uh, getting into the fun stuff now, getting into numerical summaries. So let's, uh, let's do it. All right, the key concept in this uh, video is finding and interpreting the three measures of center. Uh, those are called the mean, median, and mode. Uh, we don't re uh, re report the mode much, uh, primarily our uh, focus on uh, 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 summarizing quantitative data summarizing a quantitative variable, uh, we use the mean and the median. Now, I'm going to be redundant here. If you watched the previous video, you got this big old sermon on this. I'm going to repeat what's going on here. We typically have a population that we want to study. Is a particular treatment going to work? Well, we can't go out and implement that treatment on everyone. So we choose a sample, and we use, again, these fancy statistical sum, uh, techniques that I'm going to teach you, ANOVA, two-way ANOVA, multiple regression, logistic regression, chi-square, all this stuff. And uh, we use those techniques to generalize to the population, to make a statement that generalizes to the population from which we collected our sample data. What we're doing right now is we're learning to describe our data that we collected as a sample. And right now I'm going to talk to you about the three measures of center, the mean, median, and the mode. And our focus is primarily on the mean and the median. So uh, the mean is just the arithmetic mean. A lot of people call it the average. And once we get into um, uh, you know, advanced statistics, we no longer say average. You're not going to open up any journal article, uh, any publication uh, within your discipline, occupational therapy, nursing, uh, uh, allied health, whatever it may be, uh, and see the word average. It's always the mean or the arithmetic mean. Uh, the mean is easy to find. You just add up the scores and divide by uh, the total number of uh uh, well, what, your sample size, the total number of numbers that you have. Uh, why is the mean uh, uh, valuable? Well, first of all, it uses every single data in our data set. Uh, the disadvantage to the mean is that one extreme value can change the value of the mean significantly. So if you have an outlier, and you know, what's an outlier? An outlier is just an unusually high or unusually low value relative to the rest of the distribution. So if you have outliers, then it can artificially inflate the value of the mean. And the third bullet there, the mean is the preferred measure of center when we have a bell-shaped and symmetric distribution. Really easy to find. Uh, if we have a mean from a sample, we call it X bar. If we have a mean from a population, we call it mu, M-U. Uh, they're found the same way. Uh, we sum up the data. So when you see X bar equal, that Greek letter, uh, sigma, just means summation in mathematics. X is our vector. Sorry, don't want to get that fancy here. It's just our numbers. And then N is the total number of numbers that we have. So if I have 20 measurements, uh, you know, 362, 210, and so on and so forth, I want to find the mean. I'm just going to add up all the numbers. I'm going to divide by 20, and I get a mean for the 20 smokers uh, for 292.2. Median is a little bit different. Well, the median is a lot different. The median is the measure that's smack dab in the center of our data when we arrange our uh, data from lowest to highest. Uh, it becomes much clearer when we see an illustration, which we'll see in the next couple of slides. Uh, important measures uh, are properties of the uh, median. Uh, the median does not change by large amounts. So if we have an extreme value, and I'll demonstrate this in a data set here in just a second, uh, the median is resistant uh, to outliers. And uh, the median does not use every single value. It just uh, 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 measure, uh, uh, arranges the data from low to high 
I mean, we can change the highest value to whatever we want. It doesn't change the value of the median at all because the median is actually a location uh, and not a cumulative measure, so to speak. Uh, the most important thing, I think, from this uh, uh, slide is the third bullet. When we have a skewed distribution, uh, the measure of center that we prefer to report is the median. Now, let me, let me make something clear here. <clears throat> when, you're, when you're describing sample data, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to do what's called descriptive statistics. And you're going to report measures of center and spread and outliers and all that stuff. We will report both the mean and the median. So this is not a choice of, well, we look at our distribution and see that it's positively skewed. Therefore, we only report the median. We don't. We, we report both of them. But an educated uh, reader or an evaluator of a study can look at a distribution and see that it's skewed and say, well, of the two, I should put most of my emphasis on the median because it's the best measure of center when we have a skewed uh, distribution. So that's that's really important. Again, tattoo to the brain. Uh, hit replay if you need because uh, that's, that's something extremely important. So the median, uh, if we have an odd number of data values, it turns out that you'll have a distinct value in the center. So to create the median here, we have to rearrange these data from low to high and then we go smack dab to the center and the data in the center is 262 so we would say the median of this data set is 262 now when we have even number it's a little bit different we don't have a number of smack dab in the center uh, we have two numbers in the center. So what we do is we take those two numbers, we average those, and we get the median here by taking 262 plus 296 uh, divided by 2 is 279. Now you might say, now Dr. Darbo, you're going through this very, very quickly. It's been a while since I've had statistics. Uh, yeah, uh, if you need to get into a median and uh, the calculation of a median more, uh, go to Khan Academy, go to some of the resources. Now, j heck, just go to Google and type in you know, how to find the median, and you'll get uh, about 1.8 million hits. Uh, there's plenty of information out there. But from the perspective, uh, again, from 30,000 feet, my job teaching you statistics as a healthcare professional, if we want the median, are we going to arrange our data from low to high and physically come in and find the cent? No, we're going to plug it in technology. And uh, I'm going to uh, teach you how to find the median. But you know, to interpret uh, correctly, we need, uh, I think, these illustrations. Uh, the mode is the uh, value that occurs the most. Uh, so uh, again, I don't get into the mode much. Um, but uh, it's, it's still something to kind of have on your radar and have it tattooed to the brain. All right, so we can either have no mode, one mode, or multiple modes. So uh, for the 20 uh, levels that we have uh, at the top, uh, sometimes it makes it easier to, um, uh, to find the mode if we arrange from low to high. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't. That's kind of silly of me to say because if we want the mode, what are we going to do? We're going to arrange it from, uh, we're going to plug it in technology and hit mode, and it's going to spit out our mode. But anyway, I think a visualization of this is good. Uh, another example, if we have wait times of 30, 30, 50, and 50, we have two modes, and oftentimes we don't have any, uh, or we have no values that are repeated, so we would say that we have no mode. All right, gang, that's all I got. Take care.